A two-year Toastmaster veteran, Nicole Jones, is beginning her storytelling manual. Since this project is the only one that allows her to use someone else's material, she is very excited to bring you one of her favorite fractured fairy tales, The Three Little Pigs, as reinterpreted by John Bunyan. Please welcome Nicole for a story, The Triune Tale of Diminutive Swine. All right. Full table? Alright. Real magnet, like this. <laughs> English is a difficult language. Fellow Toastmasters, lately I've been revisiting the classics and I've discovered something. English is hard. Now, I wonder how in the world did we get from something like, thou shalt not smite thy brother, to today. See, back in the 1700s and 1800s, uh, the average person had a working vocabulary of 54,000 words. 54,000 words in the working vocabulary. Today, we have a working vocabulary of about 3,000 words. So when we read Shakespeare, we're like, what did I just read? We're a little confused. And, and I would think, if I was born in the 1700s, can you imagine what, what it'd be like for moms to tell their kids bedtime stories every night? It'd probably go something like, in time past, though not long ago, there were pigs, a stature little in number three, who, being of an age both entitled and inspired to seek their fortune, did set about to do thusly. When they had traveled a distance, pig number first spake, saying, Hearken, brethren, heed this tempestuous realm. Tarry we long from hearth and home. We shall fare, I fear, not well. <laughs> and so, being collectively agreed, but individually upheld, each set out to construct for himself an abode. Pig number first did erect his house from straw. Pig number second did likewise, though rather not from straw, instead from sticks. Meanwhile, unique in his imaginings, Pig number three did erect this his domicile, stalwart and garish, a structure made from brick entirely. Soon, there happened along, as is frequently the t tale in, or the scenario in classic tale of protagonist pig or red a child, a wolf. Carnivorous nature at full season, he called out to the straw and con swine, saying, Pray thee, little pig, grant me entrance. A pig one we call the sage foreboding that he is mad who trusts in the tameness of a belly pinched wolf. And so responded immediately, Nay, it shall not be, indeed, not by wit nor whiskered jowl. Prepared for this most expected response, the wolf responded immediately, Then steal thyself, little pig. Forthwith shall I endeavor, by employing means both huffing and puffing, to dismantle yon flaxen fortress. <laughs> Whereupon, who issued forth from the wolf, an exhale of gale proportions, rendering straw hobbled with dregs and dross, and carrying aloft piglet and chattered quarters both. Exposed now to claw and fang, pig one made haste, wolf in pursuit, to the stick festoon sanctum, a peccary secondary. <laughs> so I can picture you to cry out in dismay, <coughs> Well, this knots my knickers. <laughs> the marshal and a feral wolf to my doorstep is nowhere among those endeavors amicable or congenial. A thousand pardons, squealed one. To seem the beast's maimful breath has purged me of home and sound judgment alike. The mighty maelstrom of the wolf's exhale flattered second swine shack and silenced the sanctimonious scolding simultaneously. Lo, and behold, squeal too, stand we now amid wooden wreckage, tremulous and vulnerable, with nary a strategy for eschewing the canine devourer looming in deadly proximity? Strategy, squealed one. Well, tis noble to contemplate tactical particularities, press the scare with the time restraint, permitting detailed strategical conversations. I would urge we run! <laughs> by their own fleet-footed competence or the wolf's swindless attitude. 
the diminutive slime arrived at their ultimate kindred neighbors, inexpungible brick ingress unscathed. Upon the third pit's door with urgent <coughs> hooks they pounded, shouting, Unbar this entrance, and with haste we beseech thee. The third pig hailed from the American colonies, and possessing a vocabulary substantially less robust than his impromptu visitors, replied, Say what? <laughs> <laughs> Seek we sanctuary, they implored on the verge of hysteria, lest we fall forthwith to the ravenous appetency of yonder approaching carnivore. <clears throat> Confounded by their important words, Pig Three did render a jar of his portal, whereupon one and two spilled through past the threshold and evaded. The eldest wanted to come in. He could have said that. <laughs> Soon the sinister hiss of the wolf could again be heard outside. Pray thee, pigs, grant me entrance. The wolf squealed one and two. Wolf, said three, what do you suppose he wants? <laughs> he seeks to gain purchase within. Indeed, he would occupy this very alcove where he but afforded the most meager of opportunities. Right. I'm just going to go ask him what he wants. <laughs> Under no circumstances, squeal to, fling himself bodily against the portal. There is not to be gained a costume external opponent save our own immediate demise. What did you say about my mama? <laughs> House and occupants were again engulfed in a malevolent blast of bullfish wind. The foundation shook, the frame rattled, and lo and behold, to the astonished eyes of both Piglet and the encroaching scoundrel alike, stood the third pig's lodging undaunted. Good news for you, Pig. A cast of his maid, Pig 2, queried of 3. How does against such relentless and torrential onslaught the stone style endure? Pick three, puffed out chest, tapped a foot to the foot to the hearth, and replied, American maid. <laughs> 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 well, it doesn't ask 